What is going on guys? Chris here. So welcome to the, the third video in three days. Uh, it's good to be back making videos on the channel again. Um, the videos have been doing pretty well considering I've been gone for two years. Uh, two videos ago, I, I posted the I'm back video and then uh, yesterday morning, <clears throat> I posted the uh, story of my health situation last year. Um, so if you haven't watched that video, I won't spoil it, but go back and check out those videos. And uh, today we're going to be talking about um, the birth of my child and the leading up to that point. So I've also noticed from the videos that I've been recording, uh, I'm doing pretty good about an excessive amount of putting ums and uhs in there. Um, and then look at that, nailed it. So I'm doing pretty good. It's not like I haven't talked to a camera in, in two years. So we're doing pretty good. I'm taking suggestions on what else to put on the channel at this point, but let's get into the story. So me and me and the wife, me and Maria got married 2015, August 29th, 2015. We'd been together five years at that point. We started dating in May 10th of 2010. So we're almost coming on 10 years, which is ridiculous. And there's somebody pulling up right next to me, which is kind of awkward because I'm talking to nobody. But it's all right. So we did things in an order which is not seen, you know, much nowadays. You know, we dated and then we moved in together and then we got married and then we bought a house and then we bought a dog and then we had a baby. Pretty solid in terms of, of life planning. All right. So pretty proud of that at this point. But either way. We had about one scare, and I wouldn't really call it a scare because we're, we were in a position where if we had a kid, we'd be okay. So it was about uh, three-ish years ago, we were still living in the apartment, and she ended up being pregnant. Uh, we called our friends, you know, we made the announcement on Facebook and everything because I was a little naive in terms of... Um, the way we handle it, handled it, or the way I was planning on handling it back then. So we announce it and everything, right? At that point, she's probably four to five weeks just at the point to where you can find out you're pregnant, right? Um, I didn't really understand much about the process. I thought I did, but I didn't. So um, I don't know, about, about a week later, maybe, we start getting the signs and uh, symptoms of possibly a miscarriage. So we hold off, you know, some, some of the symptoms, some of the bleeding and stuff like that. Sometimes it's just normal. But then when you start seeing, you know, a lot of blood and all that, not to get too graphic on this video, if there are young people watching, but uh, I'll try and keep it as informative and less, uh, well, is what it is. If you're young and watching this video, I apologize. Forewarning, if you don't want whoever watching this video, maybe tell them to turn it off. But, um, so we, we start, start seeing, you know, a lot of bleeding. So we go to the doctor, we go through the process, we sit in, um, I think it was the emergency room. We go to, no, we go to a, a separate place first. I don't remember if it was an urgent care, Planned Parenthood, whatever it was. And we basically just take a test for that, tells us she's pregnant and we're like yeah we we know you know we're concerned about this and they're like well we can't do anything for you so we have to go to an emergency room we go to an emergency room we wait about eight hours legitimately eight hours um for them to be like yeah probably are having a miscarriage so literally a waste of time it was rough um much more rough on her than me as I've said in previous videos, I'm very, very good and capable at handling uh, difficult situations, stress, emotions. Um, and I could never expect anybody in her position to deal with it this, the same way I can. Um, at first, when we first found out, I was stressing out um, just about having a kid in general because it wasn't planned. So it was just like... I could probably be ready at any point, but just, just all of a sudden knowing like, okay, now's the time. It was a little unsettling, but 
once we actually started talking about, you know, obviously it's coming. So, you know, it was, I think both of us got excited. So it went from both of us freaked out, both of us nervous, upset, you know, all the feelings of an unplanned pregnancy to excited. And then obviously to upset again. The part that I was mentioning earlier where I was naive and messed up was we had announced it to everybody. <clears throat> and I don't think, I don't remember, but I feel like we might have announced that like, you know, it didn't work out. But not everyone follows us on Facebook. And a lot of times news travels, a lot of times, you know, everyone knew we were pregnant. Uh, you know, for, for, for a few weeks, at least I would say a few weeks. So the hard part that that created was almost a full month or two. It was probably more than that of, um, people who didn't get reinformed asking me and her how the pregnancy is going. And it's not their fault. It was my fault for suggesting we announce it that early. I wasn't aware at how often miscarriages happen. I just wasn't. I just didn't know. Uh, so literally for months, just like how the pregnancy is going, I'm like, yeah, it didn't work out. Didn't, you know, just, I didn't want to be like, oh, we had a miscarriage. I was just trying to be polite and just didn't really want to talk about it. But all the time, for months, just like, oh, hey, how's, you know, how's the pregnancy coming? Do you know what it is yet? And it's just like, it, it, you know, it didn't work out. It didn't, whatever. So either way, we move on. <clears throat> Years down the road, we, we, we get the house, we're settled in, we, we decide to actually start trying for a baby. Now, when, you know, if any of you are in a relationship or young or to the point to where like, you feel like it is so easy to get pregnant, you know, one slip up, one one any of one anything you're just like god i'm gonna be pregnant it's gonna be awful right that's what you think when you're younger like oh god don't slip up you you know every single person you know that's of age that's watching this video at some point has probably had a pregnancy scare or 10 in their life right and it always seems so easy to get pregnant and then so we start try, so she stops taking the birth control right you know, we, I think it was the year after because we wanted to plan our pregnancy around our friend's pregnancy because it just, it just does a cool idea. So that's what we wanted. So she stops taking her birth control. I think it's a full year after being married. We go on our honeymoon because that's just the way we planned it out. And, um, she stops taking her birth control in like September ish, maybe August. So we're like, you know, it does take a while to wear off. So, you know, we do what married couples do try to have a baby some married couples um that was the plan so we started trying to have a baby and you know a few few months goes by and you know we're not really having any luck you know our friends um thankfully got pregnant right away right, right away f first trying so we're like oh you know you know it's it's kind of disappointing we can't like you know i mean we weren't planning on having it be a month apart but you know that'd be cool Raising kids with, with friends, you know, going through the same stresses and concerns and everything. It's just cool to, to, to have it all happen together. So it, that was the plan, but ours didn't really work out. So, you know, you know, three months goes by, four months goes by, five months goes by, you know, we're, we're watching all the tricks. We're reading all the wives tales. We're doing all these things that say help. We have a friggin' calendar that marks the most fertile days. We're, having her eat certain things. I don't know. Everything you can think of to try and get pregnant. It's just not happening. <clears throat> and this is no fault to anybody either. But all the time just, you know, like, oh, when are you guys having a baby? And like, oh, you guys going to have a baby yet? And they don't know we're trying. So it's not, it, it's not their fault. But like all the time, just like, when are you guys going to have a baby? And little do they know, like we've been trying for almost seven, eight months now, nine months now, 10 months now. Um, and nothing, it, all the, you know, it, we're trying, I don't know, four or five, six times a week, not to be too detailed. Um, almost to where it's starting to seem like 
the point of, of, of trying to make a baby is trying to make a baby and not, you know, any other reason. And it, and it, we going into 10 months, 11 months, and we start considering maybe going to a doctor because, um, I think anything you read, it says after, if you've been trying for a full year, you should probably go see a fertility doctor. So we're sitting there wondering, you know, maybe one of us or both of us isn't capable of having children. Um, which would obviously suck. We both want kids. So <clears throat> we're into about 10 months going on 11 and we're going to one of our friend's weddings and we find out she's pregnant. Um, we tell our close friends this time. Um, we tell like parents and, and immediate close friends and then... Um, we have a positive test, right, and everything. You know, there's no blood this time. There's none of that. But then um, the we keep taking pregnancy tests. And, and that's one of the things as well. We're, we're taking pregnancy tests like every week, you know, that whole 11 months. So to constantly just, you know, see a not positive was very frustrating. Um... But so we, you know, we're, we're still taking pregnancy tests as even she got the positive one and they're starting to fade a bit. The, the line isn't as dark. So we're aware that chemical pregnancies happen. Chemical pregnancy for people who aren't aware of what miscarriages are, what chemical pregnancies are is basically, you know, the very, very, very beginning. And I'm not reading off of WebMD right now, so I might not be 100% accurate, but I can give you a general idea of what it is. Chemical pregnancy is basically when it like first takes hold, but you know, none of, you know, none of the cell division starts happening. Like it doesn't fully start developing. It's not like a miscarriage where you actually, you know, are starting the process of developing the baby. You know, it's, it's, you know, the, the sperm and the egg got there, the cells are dividing, it's starting to create itself. And then by week, you know, six to 12, is the most dangerous, not dangerous, but the most opportune time for a miscarriage to happen. Chemical pregnancies are usually a bit earlier. So we, we ended up having a chemical pregnancy. So basically we got to see a positive, which was very exciting. And then all of a sudden have it not work out again. Um, I think at that point we've talked about maybe not trying anymore or just accepting the fact that it possibly wasn't going to happen. And, um, we didn't, we didn't really know what to do. Um, so we stopped taking tests. We stopped trying to try and just kind of just tried to forget about it. And just, if it happened, it happened. And, God, I don't even remember the exact time frame now, but I remember the date at which I was told. You obviously know, spoiler alert, but everyone knows I have a son, especially if you've watched videos or follow me on Twitter or friends with me on Facebook. So it obviously did work out. So we're not really spoiling anything, but um, flash forward a little bit in time, not, not too long, but a little bit farther ahead here. And the chemical pregnancy probably happened... Uh, July-ish, August-ish, around there, so around 11 months. And then our friends who were, you know, who did thankfully get pregnant um, pretty relatively easily um, were entering the time where they were going to have their baby. So, so you know, we I took a week off from work. Um, Maria took a week off from work so we could be there for it. And our friend starts having contractions that night. So, or she thought she was. So, so either way, Maria was going to go stay with her that night. So that way, you know, our, our friend had to work, our friend had to work overnight. So, you know, the mom to be stayed at home, you know, obviously cause she's about to have a baby. So either way, uh, Maria comes to me and she's like, I got you an early anniversary present. Um, or was it early birthday? 
No, it was an early anniversary present because our friends had their baby on our on our wedding anniversary, on our second wedding anniversary. So uh, it's the night before our wedding anniversary, so that would mean it would be August 28th. Yep, August 28th. And she brings me a Papa John's box, right? I'm like, okay. Um, and I open it, and it's a positive pregnancy test. And I was just like, uh, I don't remember what my reaction was. I think I just stared at it. I didn't really allow myself to get excited anymore was where we were at. And <laughs> sorry, a lady just... <laughs> I don't, that's terrible to laugh at. A lady can't get over this little snowbank in front of Jake's Wayback Burgers, and she just kind of just keeps falling. And I could have gotten out and helped, but I'm, like, full, like, three rows away, and by the time I even got done saying that, she was already up. So I'm not a jerk. It was just kind of funny. So, anyway, Papa John's box. I open it. So I'm, I'm containing my excitement. We've been through enough disappointments to where I'm just like, okay, well, I'm going to be happy at 12 weeks. Literally, uh, at, at eight weeks um, and below, you're at like a one in seven chance or so of a miscarriage. One in seven. It's very common. And especially if you've had one before, I think that increases your odds of, of having one or something along those lines. So, I was like, I'll be excited at week 12. Week, week 12, in comparison the odds of it are like a 97 to 99% chance that the baby is, is on its way and there would be no miscarriage. It's somewhere, somewhere around there. It drops from one in seven to almost 99%. That is the crucial time period. Um, so either way, our friends have their baby. We find out we're having a baby. It's, it's, it's a good time. Um, we move on to our appointments like normal, no bleeding, no issues. And then obviously spoiler alert, we move on and we, and we, you know, we move on to week 12, we get to see our baby. It's there. We're past the point of, of having to worry, although I'm still going to worry, but we're past the point of having to worry as much. <clears throat> and then we move on and we are dead set. Like, it's a girl. Don't know why. It's just, we both were just like, I have the feeling it's a girl. We pick out the name, Caroline. We both agree on the name. It took a while. Maria had a bunch of awful names. Sorry. Just, they were awful. And we agreed on Caroline. We're very excited we move on to the, the, the gender reveal thing. Ultrasound. We both go in there. We find out it's a boy. We're both disappointed. And it's not a dis disappointed in a way like I didn't want a son. I don't know why I just wanted a girl first and a boy second. I was more disappointed that just the way, the way I wanted things to go didn't work out. I wasn't disappointed that we had a boy. I was just disappointed that like our friends had a girl. It's like, oh cool, we could have a girl and then we'll have a boy. And I know that's not how things work and it's probably silly to want or even, even expect. I don't know. Either way. So we were disappointed, but that was gone within whatever. Um, I'm very happy that I have a boy now. So I feel very odd for being disappointed in the first place back then. I think I just had my, you know, my heart set on a girl, then a boy. Like, an, like a, I don't know why. Maybe that's because how it was with me. I don't know. Either way. But we move on. We buy the boy stuff. We do everything. Um, and we move on to, God, this video is being long. I got to keep it going. We move on to, you know. There's no issues throughout the pregnancy, all right? You know, we buy a Doppler, check the heart rate, we're, you know, whatever. We're making her sh sure she's eating the right things, drinking the right things, vitamins, not drinking caffeine, all this other stuff. So we're, we're trying to do things the right way. <clears throat> we move on to the, the delivery day. <clears throat> we move on to the due date. And um, she ain't, he's not, not, she's not, she's ready. He's not ready. And we move on to... Um, Five days after, and they induce. They, they We know they're going to induce that day. Uh, there was a slight concern that possibly he had always been head down and he wasn't head down only because we couldn't, the doctor couldn't feel his head being in the right spot. Um, we get moved over to the actual hospital where the delivery is going to happen. They run an ultrasound. Everything's fine. He's in the right spot. Um, and then we move on to that day. Needless to say, if you've watched my previous video, I am I am just in the course and process of the extreme round of antibiotics. So needless to say, 
Uh, besides nerves and all that, my stomach is jacked up. Jacked up. I can't even explain how bad. But I can't complain. My wife's about to be in labor. But I am in the most uncomfortable pain and stuff just from all the antibiotics I'm taking. They're just literally jacking me up. But again, I could not complain. I mean, I let her know what was going on. Um, but I didn't want sympathy. So I just, you know, I held it together, did what I needed to do. So either way, we get there at 3 or so in the afternoon on um, May 9th. Uh, she goes into labor from being induced because he's not, he ain't coming yet, but we need to get it going because she's already five days past. So they induce labor at about eight at night, seven or eight at night. And labor starts and she can't sleep. And obviously I, I don't plan on sleeping if she can't and the pain is too bad from labor, labor pains, contractions, all the above. She can't sleep. We go through about eight hours of labor with no pain meds because we want to hold off until, you know, we need them. And the doctor comes in, you know, puts the stuff in to make her numb. And then we actually start pushing around 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. Prior to the pushing, so I've been up since the previous day around like 8 a.m. or so. Stay up all night, obviously. Maybe got 45 minutes of sleep. The pain meds allowed her to sleep for probably 45 minutes. And there we are. The doctor comes in after about 30 minutes of sleep around 6 a.m., and is like, just I just wake up to, I need some help in here. Immediately I get up, obviously. And I'm like, what's going on? Obviously they're not listening to me because I'm not their first priority. My baby is their first priority. I get it. But either way, I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, oh, the heart rate, we're losing the heart rate. Or like the heart rate are in D cells. We just don't like where it's at. So obviously, not only did I just get woken up after 45 minutes, which if you have ever gotten little sleep, that's awful. I would have rather just had no sleep. Um, so I just immediately wake up and now adrenaline's going and then I haven't eaten right because my stomach's been off and now stress and anxiety and all of a sudden adrenaline are in my body too. So immediately I'm feeling sick and stuff. So I'm like, okay, whatever. The other doctor comes in, the doctor that we've dealt with more and the doctor that we liked, not that we didn't like the other one, but the one we liked came in and they have her getting on her hand, like her elbows and knees to kind of try and move the baby and stuff and, and all this stuff. And our regular doctor comes in, he's like, stop, 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 stop. Just just lay back on this side, do this, and it works out. Five hours of pushing later, it's not working, right? Five hours of pushing. We take her off the medication to try and let her feel it more so she can maybe push better, not working. We try different positions, different whatever, not working, right? And we're being encouraging. The nurses are great. They're all being very encouraging. They're saying things like, you know, like, you're doing good. That was so, so much better. Like, he's, you know, he, like, got, like, halfway out. And, like, when I'm watching, I'm like, I, uh, but at no point am I going to be like, that wasn't even close. But it wasn't. In my head, I was like, God, that's not, that's, he ain't coming at all. He, he, like, if there was, like, a percentage, we were getting about 15% out of the hundred we need if even the head let's just say if i needed a hundred percent of the head out to 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 get there we were getting 15 to 20 ish percent of the head and if you see your head yeah like you need like there and we're getting like way just just up here it wasn't working doctor comes in he's like we're gonna try a vacuum i don't understand what that means kind of worries me i'm like what do you mean a vacuum what what does that mean so they like suction cup his head <laughs> and i'm just like okay, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I, all right. They try and suction him out. Doesn't work. They try and suction him again, and his head's getting all weird looking, and I'm, I'm getting worried, and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not, but, you know, if at some point I have to say something, but I trust the doctor. I like him, so, okay, let's, so he's like, all right, we're going to have to do an episiotomy, which is basically very graphic, but they basically cut the bottom of... <laughs> I don't want to be too graphic. 
they cut the bottom of where the baby's coming out down towards, you know, the girl's butt, pretty much. They just make the opening bigger by cutting open more larger of an area for the baby to come out. So they he cuts a few times, right? <clears throat> I'm right there the whole time. It's not weird to me. It's not odd to me. This is what happens. And he gets the head out. First immediate thought, <clears throat> I was like, he's, he's, uh, this is from watching, by the way, medical TV shows, which I know aren't always very accurate, but they give you a general knowledge, right? I've watched a lot of medical TV shows, Grey's Anatomy, House, all this other stuff, right? So he comes out and I'm like, he's not breathing or making noise, but he's pink slash red. So I, that, I know that means he's getting oxygen. And then I'm like, wait, it doesn't matter because the umbilical cord is still attached. That's how he's getting his oxygen. Completely just know that from medical TV shows. So either way, I'm just micromanaging every thing I'm looking at. And I'm just like, okay, hey, looks good. His face is good. His head is good. They pull him out. Okay, yep, they were right. He's a boy. And uh, obviously got emotional um, when he came out because it was just, we had tried for so long. Just everything I just explained in this past, Jesus, 26 minutes. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Crazy experience. And then uh, you go through the... F now he's nine months old, and you and I've gone through worrying about nothing in my life at all to worrying about everything, worrying about, um, you know, when he gets an eye infection, he got an eye infection, and then worrying about how his circumcision is going to heal and worrying about how he's going to sleep to make sure he doesn't roll over, to make sure he doesn't die. All of these things that you've never thought about, you worry about every day, all the time. Every day. Your health, you start worrying about because you need to be there. I start worrying about my health more. So I was going through all those stomach issues, getting a colonoscopy, making sure I didn't have cancer, blah, 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 all these stuff. And immediately, I'm not worried. I don't care about me anymore. I just worry about being there for him. So a lot of times, if it was ever, if I ever got emotional over worrying about my health, it was just because I wanted to be there for Liam. So it's, it's a, it, you're a different person. It's, it's, it's something that all parents know. And it's something that no parents can understand. And I don't mean that in a rude way, because that kind of sounds rude. But you just, you don't understand um, what it changes about you. It just happens. And then you'll be saying the same thing. You'll be like, no, I feel like I have a general understanding. Like, you know how you're going to feel. You can predict it. But when it happens, it's just, it's, it's different. Um, I can't watch things the same way anymore. Like, like videos and movies and stuff with with sick kids or kids that are taken away from their parents or bad things that happen to kids. I can't watch it the same anymore. Um, the emotions that those type of scenarios bring on is just... is It's so much different. I can't explain it. Um, so, I can't make this video any longer. I feel like there's going to be more detail of, you know what it's been like being a dad, but maybe I can just make this video, you know, the pregnancy, the miscarriages, having a baby. But either way, if you've watched this video for 29 minutes, uh, thank you. I don't know why you would watch me talk for 30 minutes, but either way, I'll be updating people on my life. And again, I like uploading it to YouTube because this video, unless, you know, then the world happens, this video is going to always be here always. If you ever want to look back on memories on things that have happened, I have my wedding on my, on my channel. I have my proposal on my channel. Um, I didn't record the birth because that's, it, we we're more focused. Yeah. Focused, focused on other things, but just, this will be here forever. This will be something like when people want to look back on memories and people enjoy like looking back at old photos, like what, like they used to back in the day, photos used to be the option. I, I now have a video of how I was feeling, what we went through of the story of, of, you know, our child. So this is what I like. This is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be updating, you know, the channel daily, three, four, five videos a week, just on what's going on. You'll get some of Liam as he's growing up. You'll get to grow up, not grow up. You'll get to see Liam grow up in these videos. And I'll like that because, like I said, I'll be able to look back and I'll be able to watch Liam grow up. If I ever want to reminisce on stuff that happened in the past, right? 
I'll be able to actually watch it. That's the plan. That's why I like doing this. That's why I'm going to keep doing this. So um, again, thank you. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. I lost about 20 subscribers since I came back because I think people realize like, who is this? Why am I subscribed to him? Because the content is a little different than it used to be, all right? So uh, we're still above 5,000 subs though. So, you know, 30 minute video. Good God. Anyways, guys, I'll see you next video. I don't know what it'll be about, but I've done three videos in a row. That's pretty solid. You'll get more, though. If you guys have suggestions on a video, anything you want me to talk about, any questions you have, go ahead and drop a comment. Um, I'll fill you in the best I can. And as always, I'll see you guys next video. Okay, bye.